going to talk about the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Make sure you, you listen and watch all our sermons concerning wisdom. And today it is so important. This is not just a teaching service. This is an impartation service. I want you to prepare your hearts. Don't wait for us to finish so that we can pray for you that you may be imparted. But as you hear for the word of God, receive it into your heart. The Bible says the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The best moment to receive is the word of God, is when the word of God is being released. The rema, the spoken word of God. So receive it and grab it and let it impart your spirit. Let it impart your heart. Although after the service we'll be praying for us specially and uh, the Lord is going to do us good. I want you to know that as we speak about wisdom, wisdom is a spirit. Is a spirit. And it is a good thing to know that wisdom is a spirit. Because if it is a spirit, then it can be imparted to you. Then you can receive it. If, it's, if it is a spirit, you can receive it. So wisdom is, is, is a spirit. And uh, those who are here on Wednesday, we were learning on uh, the wisdom to build. And that is so important because it is actually the fundamental reason as to why God gives us wisdom. That we may be able to build. And we saw that we are builders, wherever we are. We are builders of our spiritual lives. We are builders of our families. We are builders of our, our companies. We are builders of our businesses. We are builders of the nation. So everyone needs this wisdom to build. Because the Bible says in the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 24, from verse 3 and 4, that through wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established, and through knowledge, it is filled with every pleasant and precious thing. So if you are to build anything, you need wisdom to build it. And we saw that those be who build without wisdom, number one, that house cannot stand. It cannot be established because there is no understanding. Number two, that house will be empty because it is through knowledge that the house is filled with pleasant things. So there are people who have built their lives high, but their lives are not stable. Their marriages are not stable. And some of them... Their marriages are not full of sweet fruits and results. Some, their businesses do not have sweet fruits. Some people's lives do not have sweet fruits. It is because they lack knowledge. Because it is through knowledge that the Bible says that the house is filled with pleasant and precious things. So, when we look at the many precious things that you have in your life, that is how we know how much wisdom that you have. You can never succeed beyond the wisdom that you have. You can never advance beyond the wisdom that you have. That is why the Bible says that wisdom is a principal thing. So with all you are getting, get understanding. It is the principal thing. Don't pray for anything else if you have not prayed for wisdom. Don't look for anything else if you have not looked for wisdom. Because when you look for wisdom, when it comes, it comes with gold, it comes with silver, it comes with honor, it comes with the length of days. Wisdom is all we want, brothers and sisters. Put it on the top of your list. Anytime you are going before the Lord, tell him that give me wisdom. In anything that you do, pray for wisdom. It is the principal thing. If you have wisdom, you will not pray for finances and even many other things. You will not pray for your husband who wants to throw you out of the house. You will not pray for that family that is about to break up if you have wisdom. Because the Bible says that a woman, a wise woman with her own hand, Builds her own house with wisdom. So when you have wisdom, it actually makes you not to pray for these many other things. Because wisdom brings everything else that you need in your life. So from today, just purpose. This is the, the, the thing that I will look for. This is the thing that I will pray for. This is what I will seek more than gold and silver. I will use more time in every day seeking for wisdom more than seeking for money. I will learn. I will understand. I will spend time with God because he is the giver of wisdom. I will spend time with the Holy Spirit because you hear that wisdom is a spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who gives wisdom. You will spend time with the word of God because the word of God is the written wisdom of God. If you seek wisdom with all your strength. We read the other day, the wisdom says that I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently, they will find me. Wisdom is found by those who love her, number one. And those who seek wisdom 
with all their hearts, with all their strength. You have to seek wisdom. You have to seek it. You have to seek wisdom. You know, wisdom is the only thing that cannot be bought. Everything else has value. Silver has value. Even gold, when you bring gold, even full of this basket, it will be given a value. But what can you give to gain wisdom? Wisdom is the only thing that you do not buy. There is no shop you can... You know, when you want gold today, you have money. You can go and buy gold. But have you ever heard of a shop selling wisdom? But we read on Sunday that wisdom is everywhere. Proverbs, let's see Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Wisdom, we are not seeking it diligently because it is not ready or it is not there. But wisdom is actually crying out. Wisdom is always out there. Crying and calling men to come. Here the Bible says, wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. The next verse. She cries out in the chief concurses. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. Verse 22. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. The next verse. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. So wisdom is always crying out, calling aloud, telling those who are simple-minded. Telling those people who always say, Sipendi, mimi spendi mambo mengi. Spendi kujua mambo mengi. No. God doesn't want us to be simple-minded. He only wants us to be simple-minded when it comes to evil. You see? But the Bible says that we must be men of understanding. Men who know things. Men who know things. Hello? Especially I am talking to, 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 to ladies. You know, sometimes, ladies, there are so many things and very important things you people ignore. Unaweza shangaa hata vile tunafikiria rigiji ni mfemas Kenya. Kuna a lady in Kenya. Ameolewa kona watoto hajui deputy president wake anaito aje. Ama wakati mungi munaona TV na ye. Yani hata wale watu wanajulikana hajui. Okay. Let's not go towards that direction today. But don't, wisdom is calling those who are simple-minded. Don't just be a simple-minded. I don't know anything. Yeah, in the church, I just want to come to the church. See, I, I, don't know, I don't want to know anything. about. No. God wants you to be a man or a woman of understanding. You know things. Not a simple-minded person. So wisdom is always calling out to the simple-minded. You must refuse to be simple-minded. The Bible says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Knowledge is so important. No, if you can actually know everything, know everything. As long as it is good, know everything. Don't be simple-minded. Know everything. Hello? Some of you, especially the economics of a country, and the way economics are very important, but many of you, you never know anything to do with that. You, you don't know. So le le let's not be simple-minded. Let's be people who are researchers. Let's be people who understand things. You know, Daniel is called a man of understanding. And the Bible says, one of the things that showed that he is a man of understanding, the Bible says of how he read books, he studied until he knew that God had said many years ago that the years of captivity of the Israelites in Babylon should be 70 years. So when the 70 years were coming to an end, he knew God had said this. So he was able, he used the information, he used the knowledge, the understanding that he had to wage a war. The reason as to why many people are perishing, they are not, they are not healed. You see, the reason as to why many of them are living in poverty is because of just a simple key they do not know. But that key is actually in the, in the word of God. If someone just knew that he was made poor, that I might become rich. Some of you, if you can just understand that one verse, it will transform your finances forever. But because of lack of knowledge, men are perishing. Men are perishing. Because they lack... <laughs> okay. Hey, my God, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> but let's continue. I don't want to yield to temptations today, but let's continue. I, I want to see you, you to see something. Those who are here on Wednesday, I told you we didn't have time to read these. But let's see what will happen. We shall come to the other verse. It's okay. But let's see how what will happen to you if you fail to listen to wisdom. And on Wednesday, we saw that wisdom will come to a place where it will love for you. Wisdom laughing for you because you rejected wisdom. The Bible says, because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. 
The Bible says the next verse. Because you disdained all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. Verse 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when terror comes. I was telling here people on Wednesday, many times you think when you are crying, God is crying with you. Sometimes he is laughing at you. Because we see here the Bible says, wisdom will laugh at your calamity. Wisdom will mock you in your day of terror. It will mock you. Why? Because you refused, you disdained, you rejected wisdom. When wisdom was calling out there, when you had time to read that word of God, when you had that time to, to be the Holy Spirit, you refused. When you had time to listen to a, 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 a sermon like this one, you thought that other things are important. You rejected wisdom. Then the Bible says, on that day of your calamity, wisdom will laugh at you. Wisdom will mock you. Because I tell you, some of you, if you are just in a service somewhere and you heard something, some of you are in that, in that place. But because you never heard what was said, you are suffering of something that the Lord has already redeemed you through liberation. But you never got it. You never understood it. So you rejected wisdom. Then wisdom says, I will laugh at you in the day of your calamity. So it's not every time when you are crying, God is crying with you. Sometimes he is laughing at you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, choose wisdom. Mwambie, never reject wisdom. Never ignore the word of God. Never ignore the instruction of God. That is where life is. L -l Let me not continue with that. Let's go back to verse, was it verse 24 or 23? We are talking about the spirit of wisdom. The Bible says, turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. So it is wisdom saying, I will pour out my spirit. So wisdom is a spirit. New Living Translation, very fast. New Living Translation says, New Living Translation. Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. You see, wisdom makes you wise. When you have this spirit of wisdom, it makes you wise. You are wise. You are a wise man. It makes you wise. It is a spirit. I will pour out my spirit. So whenever you are praying for wisdom, know that you are praying for the spirit of wisdom. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, these are prayer. That Paul was praying and he was telling them, since I heard of your faith, I do not cease to pray for you and to thank God for you, to make mention of you in, uh, in my prayers. And this is the prayer that he makes. The Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We have read that so many times. I just wanted you to see that, to give you the spirit of wisdom. So wisdom is a spirit, to give you the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. To give you the spirit of wisdom. On Wednesday, we saw that everyone God called to build, the first thing he did with that man is that he anointed that man with the spirit of wisdom. For you can never build without wisdom. And we saw, number one, when God created the heavens and the earth, that is in the book of Proverbs 8, we shall not read, that wisdom was besides God. Wisdom was the craftsman besides God. He is the, God made all things through wisdom. The Bible says that he brought forth wisdom before creating any things. Before the earth was there, before the heavens were there, before the waters were there. He first brought forth wisdom because he needed wisdom to create all things. And that is why heavens are established. That is why the foundations of the earth are firm. That is why mountains cannot just move. That is why everything is stable because through wisdom, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if God created or needed wisdom to create, who are you you think that you can just build without wisdom? We saw another scenario when God called Moses to build the, the sanctuary. The first thing he did, he anointed him and also anointed other men who are working with him. Then we saw the reason as to why God gave Solomon so much wisdom is because Solomon was to build the temple. And that temple is supposed to be magnificent. That temple is supposed to be glorious and famous throughout the countries. So God had to give him wisdom. That through wisdom, number one, 
Because wisdom attracts gold. So that he may have so much gold to build the, the temple. Number two, to be able also to build the temple with wisdom. That men may hear about it and come from all over. And that is what happened. So we saw that everything that was happening in the temple and also in the palace was displaying wisdom. When the queen of Sheba came, and the Bible says she saw the house, the palace, and the temple. She saw how those who were serving, how they even dressed, and how they were serving. When they saw the utensils that were being used, then this queen of Sheba told Solomon, I had heard of your wisdom, but when I came, I noticed that I had not even heard of the half of your wisdom, because she saw wisdom everywhere. So he said that wisdom must be formed. As long as that wisdom is still in your mind and your mouth, it is not wisdom. We must see. When we come to your house, before you speak in anything, we should see wisdom. When you come to the church like this one, that is why the Lord is giving us the spirit of wisdom. Because we want everything to be built according to his pattern. And in a way, whenever anyone comes, he listens to the pastor, he sees wisdom. He listens to the priest, he sees wisdom. He listens to our instrumental, he sees wisdom. He looks at our ashes, the way they are serving. When men look at us, they should see wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is, the sp is what we call an excellent spirit. So when you want to be excellent in all your doings, what you need is the spirit of wisdom. Because the spirit, in the spirit of wisdom, there is no error. Listen to me, what, listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. I told you that the last kind of wisdom is phronesis. Phronesis causes you to do the right things in the right time, you see, in the right way, you see, and even in the right place. That is phronesis. So it means there will be no error. No error with someone who has phronesis. No error. I was talking to my wife, you know, when we do sermons here, you'll find us the whole of that week, even when we make jokes in our house, we make jokes using that scripture. So when someone is doing something that is not right in our house, this time to Naulizana, kwani phronesis imeenda wapi? Because phronesis, when you have phronesis, Hata maziwa hayuwezi kumwagika kwa. Why? Because there is that thing that is telling you in the inside of you. Do this. There is something you have left. That is what we call phronesis. <laughs> you know, these things are given to us. They are very practical for us to live, to live with. You see? So, ni kama watu wanakawa kitaimiana hivi wane mwenye... Because I told you phronesis is that thing that you to do some. And when you ignore it, so one day to to kopale kwa stage na my wife. So ni meshika funguo. Something is telling me, weka hizo funguo kwa mfu. Even my wife is telling, weka hizo funguo kwa mfu. Then to go to my pale stage. I don't know what happened. Funguo zangu zimianguka. Sunona. Kwa pale kwa hizo nini za sewage, alafu kashimo ni kadogo, sasa ikingia uwezi toa. So, fungo zangu ziko wapi? And she was like, phronesis, you are, there is something missing in you. Phronesis. And actually, it was not that phronesis was missing. Phronesis had spoken to me, but I ignored wisdom. I told you that is how people get stolen. When that thing is telling you in the inside of you, don't do this, change this, go this way, don't go this way. But you refuse. So, it is saying, I will laugh at you. Mina taka ujue hiyo siku ulinyaganywa simu. Ah wisdom ilicheka. Bwana asifiwe. Because you refuse to listen to wisdom. And these things are very practical. Don't think that we preach things that we are going to apply in heaven or only in prayers or only in church. But even in those things. You see? Even in your house, the small things you are doing, you need wisdom to guide you. That is how you build your house. That's how you build your house. Hello bwana asifiwe. Ambia jirani yako, pata phronesis ya kutosha. So there is no error. Have you ever read of what the Bible talks about Daniel? The Bible says, these people, because they were so jealous of him, they went into his accounts and everything he did, so that they might get a mistake, and so that they can use that mistake to accuse him. But the Bible says, there was an excellent spirit in Daniel, so they could not find any error. A person with phronesis, there won't be errors and mistakes in your life. If you have so many mistakes in your life, oh, check uh, on the area of phronesis. It uh, gives you accuracy. Excellent. Excellent. Everything is done with the spirit of excellence. Not mistakes every time. And always, you always say, I will not repeat. I will not repeat. I will not repeat. 
pray for phronesis. The spirit of, of wisdom. You know? So, because God did not want his house to be or to have mistakes, there ought to have been this spirit of excellence. Then after that, we know that when that temple was destroyed, that temple was rebuilt again when these people came from Babylon back to Israel. And it was built by this man called Zerubbabel. I told you that is where we are, we are going to dwell a bit today. We see how he did it by the Spirit of God. How he built that temple by the Spirit of God. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 1. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. Verse 2. And he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I am looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. So this man here is Zachariah the prophet. So one day he sees a vision. And in this vision the Bible says he saw a lampstand. One lampstand. At the top of the lampstand was a bowl of oil on the top of the lampstand. Then around, you see this lampstand has stands. Then the Bible says on its stand or around it, there were seven lamps. Matasaba, seven lamps. You see? And then the Bible says that those seven lamps they, they also had seven, seven pipes. There were seven pipes uh, or wings. Zilikuwa na mata zingine saba. Every one lamp, every one lamp, it had seven, seven pipes. Let, let's continue. We shall understand it. Two olive trees are by eight. One at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So this is the lampstand. Then on the right here, there is an olive tree. On the left, there is an olive tree. And here are so many lamps. Then olive tree on this side, olive tree on the other side. The next verse. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the next verse. Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. Verse 6. So he answered and said to me, So this is what all these lamps and this olive oil represent. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So he is telling me that whatever you are seeing here is the representation of my spirit. So tell Zerubbabel who is building the temple that that temple will not be built by his power or by his might, but by my spirit. So whatever he saw was representing the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God. Don't worry. You, you shall get it. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace, grace. So it was about building the temple. He is telling him, tell Zerubbabel, what is this mountain? Do you know what the mountain was? This temple was so much opposed. Actually, it was stopped many times. Then after some time they resumed to construct. It faced a lot of opposition. And let me tell you, building always faces opposition. Whether you are building a family, it faces so many opposition. We are having a meeting after this service with the married, an hour with the married. Even if you are building a marriage, it faces so many opposition. If you are building a business, it faces so many opposition until you cannot do it by your own. So the Lord is telling Zerubbabel, it shall not be built by your power, nor by your might, but by my spirit. And he is saying, this mountain, these oppositions, these limitations, these obstacles that are standing before you, Zerubbabel, to stop you from building, the Bible is saying that they shall be level and you shall put the capstone. The capstone is the last stone of the temple. You shall finish the temple. You shall lay the last stone of the temple with a shout of grace, grace, grace. What does that mean? In short, it shall be done by my grace. You shall finish it by my grace. 
This is the grace for builders. We read of this one man called Paul. He said, by the grace that was given to me, I have built as a wise master builder. There is grace for builders. Whatever you are building, don't build it by your own wisdom. Don't build it by your own effort. Don't build it by your own power. There is grace for building. And when you build using this grace, no mountain will stand before you. No opposition will stand before you. If you are here, you are business and that business has refused to grow that business has refused to go forward that mountain before you the only thing to bring it down it is not by adding more power to it it's not by adding more strength to it sometimes even when you sit down and you think about it you do not have any idea he is saying it is not by power it is not by might but by my spirit and someone must say i am building that business and i shall lay the capstone the last stone of that business with a shout of grace, grace, grace. I build by the grace of God. I build by the wisdom of God. I build by the spirit of God. You know, when you are building by your own power, you are limited. But when you are building by the spirit of God, he is not limited. When you are building by your own knowledge, oh, your knowledge has a limit. It has an end. But when you are using the wisdom of God, it is the many-sided wisdom of God. Even when the enemy comes to stop you, God uses those enemies to make sure that you are building because you are building uh, by the wisdom and the spirit of God this is the grace for builders someone say I receive the grace for builders whatever I build shall not collapse whatever I build shall endure the Bible says that a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children we ought to establish systems in our lives that are founded by wisdom the grace for builders Hello. The next verse says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hand shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Oh, that the hands of Zerubbabel, the hands of Zerubbabel, began or laid the foundation of this temple he is the one who began this temple and the hands of zerubbabel will finish this temple will finish the construction oh we must be finishers of whatever we begin we shall not begin something and either that things at the end on the way number two we shall not begin things and then those things collapse on the way and then those things get opposed on the way and then those kings they get stopped on the way first floor my second floor as you build that ministry as you build that family as you build that business oh he is the author and the finisher of our favor the one who began this good work in me he shall fulfill it whatever I have begun I must put the capstone the last stone that business will not end on the process no I must lay the last stone on that building that marriage it will not crumble it will not crumble I must lay the last stone in building this marriage until it is built up until it is established Yes, you will lay the last stone. You will finish whatever you begin. Oh, I cast away that spirit of always beginning things, but you never accomplish anything in your life. Always beginning relationships, but you never are ah, in the name of Jesus. All oh, the youth, wherever you are, lift your hands in the name of Jesus. I cast that spirit of beginning relationship but you never accomplish any relationship in the name of the Lord Jesus and I declare grace to finish whatever you begin in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus we are beginners and finishers whatever we begin we have to finish someone say I am a finisher whatever I begin I must finish whatever I begin I must complete because we build by the grace of God now, you have seen these seven lambs. When you go to Revelation, it talks about what these seven lambs are. Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. Revelation, oh, thank you. Let's begin with this, then we go to 4, 5. Uh, the Bible says this is the Revelation 5, 6. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the stone, and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamp as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. 
You see here, John also gets a vision. And in a vision, he sees this lamb. This is Jesus who was slain. And the Bible says he had seven horns and seven eyes. Then he says that these seven eyes are the seven spirits of God. They are the seven spirits of God. These eyes are the seven spirits of God. Now go to chapter 4 verse 5. Chapter 4 verse 5. And from the throne proceeded lightings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So the lamps are the seven spirits of God. So the same way Zechariah saw this vision of the seven lamps around this lampstand, it represented the seven spirits of God. This is what we call the seven spirits of God. It is among the sermons I have postponed so many times to teach you. But it is still on, uh, on, my, on, uh, on, on my, my calendar. I'll, I'll come and teach it to you. Now, when it talks about the seven spirits, seven is the number of completion, the number of fullness, the number of perfection. You ought to understand what we say that when a person is full of the spirit, it means that he is having the, all the seven spirits of God at work in their lives. That is what it means to be full of the spirit. But if you lack any of them, then you are not full of the spirit. And God intends that we may be full. We may be filled with the Holy Spirit and with the fullness of the spirit. So there are seven spirits of God. In other words, it is called the sevenfold spirit. The sevenfold Holy Spirit. The sevenfold. So he is one person but he is many-sided. Like God the Father, we say God is three in one. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The same way God is one, but he reveals himself in different ways. You remember when he comes to, Mo to Abraham, he introduces himself to Abraham as El Shaddai. But when he comes to Moses, because he came to war, to age war, he comes and tells Moses that by this name, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob never knew me. They only knew, knew me as El Shaddai. But I introduce myself now to you as Jehovah because he had come to wage war. You see? So now he comes as Jehovah. So there is a revelation that Abraham got about God. There is another one that Moses had about God. And when they were going, whenever they faced sicknesses and then they were healed, God revealed himself as Rapha. You see? On the other side, when they had victory over their enemies, they called him Jehovah Nisi. Our banner. So God revealed himself many times in different because he has many sided. You remember he talked about the manifold wisdom of God. So there is also the manifold spirit of the Holy Spirit. The manifold Holy Spirit. He is of many sided. So he can reveal himself to you in one side and you never get to know the other side. But God wants all of us to have the fullness of the spirit that we may be filled to the fullness that we may know all these dimensions and not only know them but have them working in our lives the seven spirits of god what are these seven spirits of god isaiah lists them very fast isaiah 11 verse 1 isaiah 11 verse 1 there shall come forth a rod from the stem of jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots so this is about jesus the bible says that he is the root and the offspring of david and the Bible says that, the next verse, verse 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. So it's talking about Jesus and what will happen upon Jesus. I want you to know that in the Old Testament, people could not have all the sevenfold spirit or all the dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But the Spirit came upon people according to their assignments. So when you are elected as a king, there is what came upon you. When you are elected as a prophet, there is that dimension that came upon you. When you are elected as a builder, there is that wisdom that came upon you. But now the Bible says that when Jesus comes, he will have the fullness, the completeness of the Spirit. He will have all these eyes on him. He will have all these spirits at work in him. These are the seven spirits of God. Can you help me to count them? Are you ready to count them? Number one is the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That is the first spirit. 
Do you always see in the Old Testament when someone was supposed to do something great, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon someone and someone. The Spirit of the Lord. That is the Spirit of Lordship. We shall have a day to explain well about these seven spirits of God. So the first one is the Spirit of the Lord. The next one is the Spirit of Wisdom. This is where we are today. So one of the, we, the folds of the Holy Spirit is the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom. Number three is the spirit of understanding. That is the third one, dimension. Then number four is the spirit of counsel. Then number five is the spirit of might. Then number six is the spirit of knowledge. And then the other one is the spirit of the fear of God. We shall look for another time. Like Maybe I give an example. Do you know how the spirit of might operates? There are two great men who are known to operate by the spirit of might in the Old Testament. One of them was Samson. Whenever you see in the word of God, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. That was the spirit of might at work. This is what made someone like Solomon to pluck out gates, might, strength. And he carried them one kilometer away, the spirit of might. This is the spirit that came upon him when he killed a lion. It is the same spirit. So I told you two main men. Number one, Samson. Number two, David. The spirit of might was upon him. That is how he killed the bear and the lions. That's how he killed Goliath using just a stone. Because there was a, the spirit of strength, might upon him. But we are now interested in the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of knowledge. Because these are the three kinds of wisdom. So, these are the seven spirits of God. So, when the temple was being built by Zerubbabel, in other words, God is saying that I have filled these men with the fullness of the spirit to be able to build this temple. You may think that is, that is so wonderful, but I want to see something, you to see something that is even more wonderful. Let's go back to Zechariah. Let's now go to verse chapter 4. We go to verse 11. So, bad on conversation, I a vision, and I will listen. Then I answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and its left? You remember, lampstand to Leona on the right and the left, there were two olive trees. Olive trees. Now, do you know what olive trees? Do you know the work of the olive trees? Next verse says, so he is asking, what are these trees about? And I further answered and said to him, what are these two branches that drip into the uh, receptacles of the two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? The next verse. Then he answered me and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. The next verse. The next verse. So he said, these are the two anointed ones. Who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. I want you to see something so wonderful. We have the lampstand and the lamps. And then we have two olive trees. And these two olive trees have two pipes. One this side. It is inaweka mafuta kwa ball and boy kwa ju. And the other one inaweka mafuta hapa. And then the Bible says that these two trees are the two anointed servants. Who are these people? Can you give us amplified version? They stand on behalf of God. The Bible says that. Then he said to me, these are the two so sons of oil. Imagine they are called sons of oil. Sons of oil. And these are men. Sons of oil. They are, they are not oil. They are trees. They produce oil. They give oil. Men are not likened to oil, but they are likened to trees. Trees that give oil. The Bible says that these are Joshua, the high priest. Joshua was the high priest of those days. And you know it is the temple that was being built. And Zerubbabel, the prince of Judah, the two anointed ones who stand before the Lord of the whole earth as his anointed instrument. Imagine how these men were, were, were anointed to build the temple. They were anointed so much until they could not be compared to oil or to lamps. They were olive trees themselves. They produced oil. They filled oil. 
to that bow. So they always knew that the light of God was always shining in that land. God had so much anointed them. They were anointed instruments to build the temple. You cannot build for God if you are not anointed. Anyone that God wants to use, the first thing he does with them, he anoints them. He anoints them. And the greater the assignment, the much the anointing. Someone, I pray that someone may desire. You have been saying that I am anointed. But compare yourself to these men who are like trees that produce oil. They were not just oil, no. They were trees, olive trees. Someone say that in my generation. May I become an olive tree that I may give oil to those who do not oil, those who lack oil. No one will ever come closer to me. And then they lack oil. And then they lack anointing. And then they lack the power of God. And then they lack the grace of God. Brothers and sisters, we do not only shine but we also give light. We give light to other men. We give light to other men. We give fire and power to other men. May we become like the olive trees, anointed vessels of God to build his house. Anointed. Anointed. The Bible says, oh, for so God, oh, so God anointed, oh, Jesus of Nazareth. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The first thing that God did with Jesus when he was beginning the ministry is that the Holy Spirit came upon him. And that is why Jesus said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He, the Spirit of God came upon him. You can never work for God without him anointing you. Anytime he chose a king, including Saul, he is telling Saul one day, oh, when he was anointed with oil, that you shall go and as you go, you shall meet the prophets and you shall hear them prophesy. And then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you shall begin to prophesy with them. And then uh, you shall be changed into a different person. Whatever changes you as anointing, brothers and sisters, you are so much limited. The reason as to why everything is not working in your life is no, it's because uh, you are working by your effort. You are working by your strength. But there is another grace that enables you. Grace is divine enablement that I will do things by the Spirit of God. I will do things by the grace of God. I must be anointed. Oh, whenever I, where you are, even in this church, you cannot serve God when you are not anointed. You cannot do anything for God when you are not anointed. Nothing God accepts without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything you does for God must be sanctified of the Spirit. Yes. Sanctified of the Spirit. I pray that from today, oh my God, that someone will say, oh, I will not only get money that I work for, because if you, if you only get money that you only sweat for, there is no grace in that. You are eating your sweat and your effort, but someone must decide. There must be divine enablement that in whatever I am, there must be results in my life, that whenever people look at me, they will say, this is not man, but this is God. If there is nothing in your life that when people look, they can doubt, or they cannot doubt that this is go. Then you need to rise up. It is your time to rise. There must be results in our lives. Whenever people look at us, they will say, this one no man can do. This must be God. So that God will be known in heaven. So that God will be known to be the most powerful God. That is the work of wisdom. It puts you above your equals. It makes you to do things when people look at them. They will know, this must be God. This must be God. This must be God. I want someone to make this a, a genuine prayer, even after, after he untell the law. Father, let there be things in my life that are beyond what I work for, that are beyond my strength, that are beyond my wisdom. Oh, in the name of Jesus. If you are just operating according to your degrees and, you are, and you, they are good, but you need to come to another level where grace is also at work in your life because you cannot accomplish much with your qualifications. There is another thing that propels you. Grace propels you. Wisdom propels you. It causes you. Remember we read that the wisdom says that I will cause those who love me to inherit riches and wealth. And also I will cause them to sit on thrones. It causes you. It is by default. As long as you have it, there will be evidence in your life. That is how people will worship your God. That is how people will know your God. By this grace. By this grace. So anyone that God chose, number one thing he did, he anointed them. So in the days when Moses was building the, the tabernacle, now we are headed to a very important place because as the heavenly 
ministry, the Lord spoke to us that he is pouring upon us the spirit of wisdom. But we must, we must understand how it operates. Number two, we must understand why the Lord is giving it to us. He has given it to us for us to build. Because there is a great work, a quick work that has to be done. It can only be done by men of wisdom and understanding. To build, he knew that Moses cannot build alone. But he needed men. But now for these men to be able to build with Moses, they must be anointed. In this ministry, even if God has given one man this vision, but he cannot build it alone, there must be men who will build with him. But now, these men, for them to be built by him, they must be anointed with the Spirit of God, specifically in the spirit of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. In all manner of workmanship in this church, the Lord is distributing today graces, he is distributing today gifts. He is distributing today his spirit. His spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. He is doing it. Then the next verse says, To design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze. The next verse. In cutting jewels for setting, in carving wound, and to work in all manner of workmanship. The next verse. And I indeed, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Aisha, 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 much of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all gifted artisans that they may make all that I have commanded you. Do you see? I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans, all their hearts, all of them, none of them that God has not anointed with this spirit of wisdom, with this grace, that they may be able to do what God commanded Moses about that. That God can anoint you to be able to interpret another man's dream. That God can also anoint another man to come and interpret your dream. If you are building a family, you will not build that family alone. God will send you men who can help you even to build that fa that finally family even financially. If you are building a business, God will have also to give you other men because you cannot build alone. Who builds a house alone? No one. So God has to anoint. Now anyone who comes to build with you, they must be anointed. So even in this ministry, if anyone is to do anything in this ministry, even attending and coming, God says, because we are all builders, then we must all be anointed with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of knowledge. Why? So that you can do what God has commanded his servant. You are able to do what is in the heart of another man only when you are anointed. Pharaoh had a dream, but it was Joseph who built what was in the heart of Pharaoh. Men will be sent by God, anointed men. Like right now, you don't know what I am doing with your lives. What I am doing is because you are building, and God has sent us even as a prophet. Because the Bible says, through prophecy, that is how men are established. Like right now, I am one of the persons sent to your life, that you may be able to, to build where that I may impart grace, that I may impart this wisdom for you to build. You are also men who are sent to this ministry that you may do even the work that God has commanded his servant to do. But we must all be anointed if you are going to be builders. Even if ni mawe utashikilia, we must all be anointed to do the work of God. The work of God cannot be done by any one man. Even if yeye ni mkubwa na mnagani, haezi akafanya peke yake. You know, one day Moses alikuwa metoka Egypt na unawana wa Israel wakakuja tu kwa wilderness. So one day, the father-in-law, Jethro, comes to, 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 to visit them. Then when he comes, he observes that there is something that is not happening right. Because when he came, at hangekua, the next day, hangekua ata na wakati na mtoto wake, Moses. Kwa nini? Moses alikalia kiti cha judgment from morning until evening, very late in the evening, akisikiza kesi za the Israelites, Unaona, until he came back home and he is so tired and so weary. So when the father looks at him, he gives him a counsel. He gives him a counsel. And he tells him, what is this thing that you are doing to yourself? You are going to wear yourself out, you see? And actually you will not even deliver. People will also suffer. Why? Because imagine Musa and the case here were to three million. Ye ndi alikuwa na ikata. Ye ndi alikuwa na sikiza hizo kesi zote. Ni kama saa hizi Kenya tukue na judge mmoja. So from morning up to evening, listening to cases, listening to cases, zingine watu wanaena nyumbani, hazijasikizwa. 
You see? So his father tells him, you cannot do this. You'd not be able to do it. So he gives him an advice and tells him, go and choose leaders of men. Put some leaders over thousands. Put some leaders over hundreds. Put some leaders over fifties. And put some leaders over tens. And then let them judge any matter. And if there is any matter they cannot judge, it is a great matter, then it will be brought to you. So this is where structures come in. And even in the work of God, there must be structures. The Bible was written to give us a pattern or a sample of what we should do. There must be, be, be patterns. And that is why we even have leaders in this church. So that the chairman of the youth can deal with the issues of the youth. The chairman of the daughters, or not daughters, daughters of Zion, Hawana chairman, Wakona chair lady, that she can be able to deal with the issues. The person in the technical department can be able to deal with the issues in the technical department. So that the pastor or the man of God is not the one to know the instrumentalists how they are doing, the media team how they are doing, the ushering, and he is all over. No, it is not in order. If the work is done in that way, then that work will not be effective. So he castles Moses. And the Bible says that Moses did what the father-in-law told him. Now let me tell you the greatest lesson. You know sometimes I read the word of God and I, I get some lessons. This is the main lesson I learned from that story. Imagine God called, Abraham, uh, called Moses, gave him all this power, did all these things to him. But there is a counsel and an advice that God could not, not have given this man. It took another man, his father, actually a Midianite, to come and give him that advice. And many of you only say, I only download directly from God. There is something that you'll never get from God, but your mother, do you see your mother, that old mother in your, in your village, that old father in your village, God might have called you down so anointed you. But there is something <laughs> that he might not tell you. But that your parent, that other person can help you and will change your whole life. So Moses does, does that. But now these men are not anointed. You see? And how will they lead the children of Israel? Remember Moses was anointed with fire and power. But now these men are not anointed. And so he continued, even if he had men doing all that, but he continued to carry the burden. In the spirit, he is the one who was carrying the burden. Because people don't carry burdens. There must be partition of the same vision or the same spirit that is in the man who is leading that vision to the other people that they may be able to carry the burdens. So even after that, there was still difficulty. And now the story where, the story that I gave you, one day, the children of Israel in Numbers chapter 11, from verse 1, these children are tired of eating manna. And so they begin to cry. The Bible says every one of them was crying at their doors. They were saying, who will give us meat? Who will give us meat? We are tired of this manna. And then when Moses heard that, he was displeased. That is what the Bible says. And even God himself was angry because of the children of Israel. I want you to see the anger of, uh, of Moses, verse 11. The anger of Moses. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight? That you have laid the burden of all these people on me. So the whole burden was still on Moses. The burden for all men. He is saying, Why have you made me to carry the burden, the whole burden? The whole burden of these, of these people. Then he continues and tells God, Verse 12. 12, 12. Did I conceive all these people? Sasa ni Musa anaongelesha. Unajua ni sikizeni. Musikiria hii ni odd sana. I wish you had some of the prayers that your pastors, I'm not saying your pastor, but your pastors make sometimes. I don't think it is different from this. It might be funny to many of us, but I want to, you, you to know and one of the things I'll be sending you to do from today, be praying for your pastor. So he is saying, he is asking God, did I conceive all these people? Huh? Did I beget them? Mimi niliwaza. Anauliza mungu. That you should say to me. Angalile attitude akonawe mbeleza mungu. 
Did, did I conceive them? Did, did I beget them that you tell me to carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which you sow to their fathers? So in other words, he is telling God, you, you called them and you sow to their fathers, you will take them to the promised land and then you tell me to carry them as my own child on my bosom. Did I beget them? Did I conceive them? He was so much angry because the problem was that the burden, the whole burden was on him alone. The next verse says, if you are wise, if you are wise, <laughs> where am I to get meat to give all these people? For they weep all over me, saying, give us meat that we may eat. It is so bad when every member of the church is looking up to the pastor. When all their demands are placed on the pastor. That pastor is a man. He will be wary. When the pastor has to answer every question. It is wrong. He is a man. He will be wary. When the pastor has to know how the hall will be paid, how the chairs will be arranged, how the services will be conducted, how the food will be cooked, how this place will be swept. If it is one man, and then even after that, when the members come, there are diseases, all of them, they are looking up to the pastor. All their needs, they are looking up to the pastor. Is there anyone understanding what I'm trying to say? I am not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. It's too heavy for me. And I want you to know one thing that the leader... Now, Moses did not go and tell the children of Israel these things. He told them to God. There are things that your pastor may not able or be able to ever come and tell you. Don't wait. For any day, for your man of God and come and tell you, ah, I am tired of, of, of these things. And many times, especially when you are pushed to the end, sometimes we call meetings, and sometimes you may, you may find us, sometimes, we understand. Sometimes, I remember one day we were doing look at me as a prophetic intercession and I remember those days I used to travel from Busia I traveled all the way from Busia nikafika hapa usiku kwanza ninakuja kama nimekimbia ndio masaa na hata hiyo wana wa hapa ni mimi nitakuja niongoze na nifanye kila kitu wakati nilifika hapa nilipata it's already all, almost time ya kuanza prayers na kulikuwa kumejaa watu hapa kanisani na hakuna kitu hata moja ilikuwa imepangwa na nimekuja na nimetoka safari ni, nime prepare hata nauliza nifike tu hata nikae chini nitulie dakika tano ndio niweze ku ama tuanze haya maombi and then you come and find that nothing is ready Niambie hiyo siku hata kama wewe uko na nguvu waje hautauliza watu hautauliza Mungu kwani hawa watu eh Mimi ninawaambia vio hivyo ndio mkoe mnaelewa hata leaders wenye mnaona kama president unajua many of you mnapenda kupigia president makelele kuanzia mpaka mkipewa pesa yani watu wanapewa pesa na hata hiyo pesa haikuwa mnaanza kumpigia makelele hiyo pesa ni kidogo zilikuwa si basi wache kuchukua si lazima But I want you to see some pressure we put especially on people who are in charge of nations and in charge of people. We put so much pressure on them. Watu wakikufa juu ya njaa, juu ya insecurity, clubs zikifungwa ni shida. May the Lord help us. Zikifunguliwa watu wanapiga makelele, watoto wetu wanapigiwa makelele. Zikifungwa tena sasa all over eh hey, hey, eh who imagine how people are and how these men have burdens. How they have burdens. But at least we bless the Lord because there are structures even in the nation. So sikuizi aturushiage mtu mmoja tu. Unaona? Hata kama president is the, the main person, lakini zingine tunarushia rikiji. Bwana asifiwe. Zingine tunarushia nani? 
governor unaona zingine tuna because one man cannot be able to bear all these things hello may those who have ears of hearing hear what the spirit is saying you must you need to arise in some place some of you siko ubaya but there are some of you mekuwa kwa hii church for a very long time but nyinyi ni wale wa every time ukikuja unakuja umekimbia saa 5 praise again alafu unakuja unaangalia kiti hii sande the next sande na kwanza unaiangalia na attitude baya kwanza ukipata ni kama iko na kavumbi wewe hujai hata jiuliza siku moja ni nani huyo huenda kuosha hizo viti burden bearers one of the things that the lord is doing with this ministry from today is he is raising men who will be become burden bearers burden bearers that's why imagine some of you amepewa tu area moja ya kusaba na even that one hata hakuna kitu kingine anafanya church lakini even that one area anafanya anaifanya with all negligence and ignorance and na uzembe wa kila aina imagine only one thing you are doing in the church but you do not even affect it you you are not even concerned of of what you are From today I want to give you a warning. Any service you are giving to God is a sacrifice. I never God never give God any sacrifice that does not cost you. Bwana Karani, this is a sacrifice you are giving to the law. Go and learn. let it cost you in the areas of learning and and praying that as I pray, you see. So that as you play you are giving a sacrifice that has costed you, a sacrifice that is worthy. But imagine men, are just they are not burden bearers. They are not they are, they are just there. They are just there. They are actually among the burden. Ebu uliza jirani yake, yeye ni wa kubeba mzigo ama yeye ndiye mzigo? Wewe ni mzigo ama wewe ni burden bearer? I know that we might we might not be able to do one thing or everyone of us to be very effective in some areas. But if you are not active in one area, always be active in another area. Bwana asifiwe. If when we go out there for evangelism your work is so much demanding it means ni, ni pesa unatengeneza ndio maana ukweli ama uongo so baada ya kufunga kazi kumbuka kuna watu walienda evangelism eh hey, watumie pesa kidogo wakunywe maji but you are not there because you are doing business and then where you are doing that business in, in short you are not there hello So if you are not standing here stand on the other side if you are not found here be found on other we understand some of you have little babies you are not able to serve some of you have many reasons you are not able to serve but what are you doing one thing i will ask you even if you not do anything else but don't become a burden tell your neighbor never be a burden but be a burden carrier so moses is saying unaona ilikuwa serious mpaka naambia mungu if you treat me like this please kill me here and now if i have found favor in your sight and do not let me my, see my wretchedness one of the things that every leader never never want to see is their failure that's why you saw the president who got out the other day when many of you are trying to portray him as a man who has failed and let me tell you many times when you are not helping a person and other than helping them you put so much pressure on them Many of those people they they become frustrated they become depressed they begin to do things you see because they they are they are like they are seeing their wretchedness never see your leader see their wretchedness never let your leader see their weaknesses always be there to compliment their weaknesses never let never make your leader pray some other kinds of prayers before god just because you never or you refuse to stand where you are supposed to stand Never become that person who will always always make your pastor to cry before God. At kwani ni watu aina gani hii Mungu linipatia? Be always the people like Paul is saying, since I heard of your faith. You see, I have not ceased to give thanks and to mention you in my prayers. Don't become like the Corinthian church. You know the Corinthian church was this church was, that was like a, a very great zone in the flesh of Paul. The Corinthian church <clears throat> until others are coming and the Corinthian church are embracing them and these people are fighting Paul and it is Paul who came and established them Bwana asifiwe Sasa hata afadhali wale watu kanisani hawafanyagi anything in hawafanyi kitu kizuri na hawafanyi kitu kibaya kushinda sasa wale wako hapo 
na wako upande wa San Barat and uh, Tobias. Bwana asifiwe. Hata akikuja kanisani unamuona ameandika kitabu vizuri na unaona anaandika kila kitu. Kumbe si maandiko anaandika. Anaandika yale mambo baada ya hii bada. Eh hey, uliona yule dada? Eh? Sijui kichwa yake ni kama haikuagi sawa ama ni nini. Bwana asifiwe. Eh ati pasta wetu unamuonaga aje? Kwanza huyo bibi hapo, kwanza mabibi wa pasta wanako. Oh. Mkiombea pasta muombeage pastor's wife. Everywhere, every pastor's wife muombeage times two ya pasta. Wa, wengi wao ndio upigana vita mpaka za pasta. Eh na unaona venye anaangalia watu. Sasa hata afadhali ukose tu kufanya anything. Afadhali tu kuwe mzigo tukubebe, lakini sasa we ni mzigo uko na misumari na miba hata huwezi bebeka. You are thorn in the flesh. Sasa hata afadhali ukue mzigo. Jui kitu shinda kubeba tunaweza garagari ya. Lakini sasa Bwana asifiwe. Uliza jirani yako who are you? But one thing I, I advise you anywhere you, are, you see even in that company where you are employed never let your leader see their wretchedness never always be there the reason why you are employed is to help them is to compliment them then the next verse the next verse says so the lord said to moses gather me or to me 70 men of the elders of israel whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them so there were already leaders Officers, God is not telling them choose leaders. Leaders who are there, but because they did not have the spirit of the man of God, they could not be dense of the man of God. So He tells this man, call to me those leaders and bring them to the tabernacle of the meeting, that they may stand there with you. Then what will God do? And that is what God is doing today in this service. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone where is god to get where is god going to get this spirit from heaven he says i will take some of your spirit bwana <laughs> sifiwe eh sisi ndio tuko hello eh yeah. sisi ndio tu Sisi ndiyo tuko. <laughs> if you are wise, una, unashika kile nina, ninasema. Anasema, not that I will pour my spirit from heaven upon these people. He is saying, I will take the spirit that is upon you. You see? And then, I will put the same spirit upon them. Why? Because they are to help in the vision I have given you. So that vision I have given you, I must give them the same spirit that I have given you. It is a spirit that makes people to bear burden. So when this spirit came upon Moses, he became a burden bearer of the people. So the Lord is saying, for others also to help you in that area, they must carry the same spirit that you carry, so that they may also bear the burdens of the people. Hello? Hello. Our watu, na wengi hawakuwa napenda Musa. Actually, wali muinukia so many times. Lakini Musa ndi alikuwa wakati huo. Bwana asifiwe. Na akisaizi ni akina nani wako? And let me tell you, men of God are, are never, don't always think that men of God are always perfect. Nilisoma Mahali Jana kwa Facebook nikipita. Eh? It was the blind Isaac who blessed the seeing Jacob. It was the blind Isaac who carried the blessings of Jacob ambaye alikuwa mjanja. Na anona mpaka visions za binguni. But it is a blind man who blessed him. I told you it was not God who taught this thing. Actually, Mungu hapa anakuja kuendeleza ile the father, a, a gentile, the father of Moses instructed him. Hello? What we could download direct kutoka binguni bwana asifiwe. Graces are with men. If you never know how to draw from men, not, I'm not only talking to even myself. I always know, even any time I pray to God, I know that He will use men, even if it is any kind of impartation or grace. There is no direct downloading, brothers. Ama mkona hiyo password, mtu saidi hata si tunaitaji sana. Even me, I know. That is why I am also submitted. That is also, 
And I always tell you, many of you do not listen to us even for an hour. You cannot go watch a, a sermon on YouTube. I always tell you, even personally, there are times every day I watch eight hours. I'm watching the many sermons you see me preaching here. They are not mine. I am humble enough to tell you that. You know, Jesus also said that what you, you hear me say, people always say what they hear. We are not creators of... But you know, in our days, especially we want to show people that we, we are the one who have... We were somewhere with God for... Hmm? You know those people who are even having pictures of Akiwa Kwa Mlima? Ni secret place lakini wanachukua selfie. Bona asifiwe. Eh, hey, and... I have been on the mountain of the Lord for seven days. And I come back with revelation. Always learn to receive from men. If you cannot receive from men, you cannot receive from God. The graces you need are with men. The power you need are with men. Everything you need, God has already given it to men. And the person, one of the things I, I will preach, this one I'll make sure I will not preach to you any, anytime soon. But there is an opportune time I'll teach you. One day I will teach you how to receive from men. I will teach you the principle of, because there is nothing as hard as receiving from men. Actually, it would, it, it would even be better to receive from God other than men. Because one thing, people always despise men. They always despise men. But if you cannot receive from a man, you cannot receive from God. Some of you have come to a place where even your own parents, you do not know how to receive from your own parents. You do not know how to honor your parents. Do you know there is something that God will never do you without your, to you without your parents? As long as your parent is alive, some of the things you are looking for in Nairobi are with your parents. Just a minute with your parent, honoring your parent, can change the, so many things that Tamakin you are doing in a row every day. But many people do not have that wisdom. Especially, let me, let me say this and say this clearly. Especially many of you, they never know how to honor their in-laws. Many of you are in troubles because you never honored your in-laws. Hello. Hello. So there is a man in Nairobi for 10 years he has lived with a lady. He has never gone to their parents and took anything to them. And then that, that man is praying for blessings. Let me tell you, from today, jipatia time kidogo uwache kuombea baraka tena, tafuta pesa, enda kwa huyo mzazi. Alafu niambia results. Zama ombi umeomba miaka mingi, na after you kumeenda. Tell me the difference. Because many of the things we are looking for, they are with men. They are with people. Hello? So God says, I will remove, I will take some of the spirit upon you and I will pour that spirit upon these people that they might be able to bear these burdens together with you. When you continue with that story, it talks about what happened. Moses went and gathered these people and they came. And when God came down, the Bible says, he took that spirit out or that was upon Moses and he poured the same spirit upon the people. And the Bible says, they began to prophesy. What does that mean? It means they became who Moses was. Because Moses was a prophet. So they received the same thing that was in Moses. They began to prophesy. And it was so powerful. The Bible says there were two men. But walikuwa kwa list. Hello? Na kwa sababu walikuwa kwa list, the Bible says, Ata wakiwa nyumbani, when these others began to prophesy, they began to prophesy in their houses. They began to prophesy in their tents. Until two young men came running to Moses and they told Moses, Fulani and Fulani are prophesying there. You know, before that time, it was only Moses who used to prophesy. And when Joshua of Nun heard that other people are prophesying like Moses, he came and told Moses, rebuke them, tell, not, tell them not to prophesy. Then Moses asked Joshua, are you jealousy on my behalf? If I was asked, Moses is saying, if I was asked, I would love that all people of Israel would prophesy like me. That they would be made to be like I am. 
And that is the prayer, my prayer, the prayer of my heart, even in this church. That the same grace that has been given even to the man of God in this place, may the same, same grace, may the same, same measure be at work in you. The same grace in business, the same grace in other areas, may the same grace operate in you. One of the main areas I know I have grace and I carry grace is in the area of business. I carry grace in that area. I carry grace in that area. May the same grace come upon you. May you never struggle to do what your father does. It is evil to struggle. You better struggle to do what your father has never done. But never struggle to do what your father does. No one struggles. At ours as we were to biological parents. It is so easy to do what your parents does. But only in our times that your pastor is gifted in some area. But some people in that church are the poorest. It is not in order. It is not in order. It was so powerful. Imagine us coming to a place where hata wale hawako kanisani leo. As we pray here, some of them are sleeping. But they begin also to prophesy. Whatever they are. It is when the spirit of God is poured out. Not from God, but poured out. Even from the servant of God. One as if you will. So it was the spirit upon Moses that was poured. Because they were to do the same vision. The problem with many of us even in the church. We are here, but we are carrying different spirits. Okay. Spirits in Kimanisha. What I mean is, we might be carrying the, the same spirit of God, but different visions, different minds. We are not one in the spirit. That's, that's what I mean. That is why ata ukito hapa uhubiri. Ile mahubiri utahubiri leo. Aijawai sikika hii kanisa. Ache ni wapati advice wale mana minister kwa kanisa. If at any given time, ile mamba utahubiri kwa hiyo kanisa. Hakuna kitu kama hiyo imewahi sikizwa kwa hiyo kanisa. Sijawaambia murudi yake mahubiri yote yenye pasta, lakini as you preach unafaa kusikika. Your direction, your spirit inafaa kusikika ikiwa moja na Najua nawaambia hivyo kwa sababu it is something I have done. Si kwa condemn. Actually mimi ndiye nilifanya. Uliza minister Anthony, nilikuwa mahali tunashiriki kitambo before we begin ministry. Tulikuwa tunahakikisha any time tuko na youth Sunday. Kwanza tunakuja hiyo church tulikuwa haikuwa na hizi na hizi preaching za new creation nini kwanza tunahakikisha ile siku ni ya youth sunday tunakuja sasa kuharibu na mahubiri bwana asifiwe i remember one day i came and preached about the new creation and i made sure kuna mtu ameunderstand hiyo kanisa ndiyo unaona umewaiona hao watu mtu anakuja hapa anahubiri ukisikiza au skip pastor wao mahali lakini ukitrace vizuri kuna pastor mwingine unasikia akiongea acha ni siendelee na hiyo maneno lakini we must be of the same spirit. Hakuna limitations tunaweka but you should have li- have listened. You you must have that spirit of a son. As much as you want to surprise us, to lift us up, to bring us down, to push us aside, to push us ahead, to pull us with preachings, you must be submitted to the spirit and the vision of that house. Hello. Ni mahubiri mangapi sasa umesikia unakaaga unagojea ile siku. Unakuwa unauliza kwa nini wao nipatie yake mahubiri? Wasikie naweza hubiri kama Joseph Prince. Bwana asifiwe. Hello. Number two, advice kwa ministers, you teach what you have heard. And always make men to know. This actually I got it yesterday. Always make men to know that what you are preaching, you are not the originator. Be humble like Jesus. What I say is what I have heard from my father. What I do, be humble enough. What I do is what I have seen my father do. Someone say wisdom. Someone say the spirit of wisdom. Now, Moses came to a place and he had to die. God called him to the mountain and told him, as your brother has died, Aaron, you are also going to die. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord. Now because I'm going to die, choose another man. Choose another man. Who will continue or who will continue with the work or the assignment that you called me to do? What did God tell him? Numbers 27. Numbers 27. 27. Numbers 27. Nataka tumalizie. Actually our time is so much spent but we bless the Lord. Numbers 27. Numbers 27. 
verse 7 says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses in the next verse, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together. I said, is it 27? Go to 27. 27, Numbers 27, verse 7. 27, 27. Numbers 27. Uh huh. Am I getting these right? Let me confirm it for us. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Numbers. Numbers. Go on, as if you were. Seem to say, Amen. Verse 18. Verse 18. Thank you. 27, verse 18. 27, verse 18. 27, 18. Thank you. And the Lord spoke to Moses, Take Joshua the son of Nun with you, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. So this is one of the ways that impartation happens. I am teaching you now how impartation happens because we are about to do some impartation here in the next few minutes. How impartation happens. Impartation happens like here, God is telling Moses to take Joshua. Why? Because Joshua is to continue the work that Moses is doing. So the, re- the spirit that has to rest upon Joshua is not a new spirit from God. It is not a new assignment from God, but it is a continuation of the assignment that God had given to Moses. If God will ever call you to fulfill another man's vision, what you need is not the spirit, a new spirit of God. What you need is the spirit of that man. If you are ever to continue, maybe not even serving him when he is still alive, but he comes to an end and that work has to continue. What that person's successor will need, he will not need any other grace, special grace at that time from God. Because the assignment is still the same. He still needs the same spirit that was given to that assignment. So here, the Bible says, now Joshua you are the one to put your hands on him. Did anyone put their hands on Moses? Did anyone put their hands on Moses? No. That was an assignment, a new assignment that God was given to. But Joshua continues with the same assignment that God had given Moses. So what he needs is the spirit of Moses upon him. Are these things very hard for you? Then... Set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation and inaugurate him in their sight. So pray for him and commission him. Lay your hands on him and commission him in their sight. Commission him. And then the Bible says, he did, and the Bible says, and you shall give some of your authority to him. Who is giving authority here? Is it God giving authority? Moses giving authority. The first authority you get is not from God. It is from God through your father. You get it from your father. So it is the father giving authority to him. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. In other words, that they may obey you the same way they... You know, now when the spirit of Moses is upon Joshua, the people will treat Joshua the same way they treated Moses. Because it is the same spirit. You know, it is not about men. It is about the spirit. Hey, it's not about men. When you are honoring a man of God, you are not honoring that physical man. You are honoring the grace in that man. You are honoring the spirit in that man. And then the Bible says, well, let, let's jump because of time. Let's jump. Let's go to Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. Let's see the result. Now, Moses has already died. Remember, he did this before he died. Now, what happens? Because Moses is died. The Bible says, now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. So now we see what came upon him when he was, he, the, the hand of Moses was laid upon him. The spirit of wisdom. He was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Not that they did as God had commanded Joshua, but did as God had commanded Moses because he continues the vision of Moses. But I want to know, to know that he was full of the spirit of wisdom when Moses, not God, when Moses laid his hand on him. What has he feel? 
You remember Elijah one day is so weary and he tells God, kill me now. What did God tell him? He told him, now, you want me to kill you? Well and good. Actually, I will not kill you. I will take you alive. But go and look for these three men and anoint them. One of the men he was told to anoint is Elisha, that he may continue with the work that God had given Elisha. So what Elisha needed was the mantle of Elijah, was the anointing of Elijah, not another anointing. That is why he is telling him, when you see me go, then you shall receive that anointing. It is the anointing of the sons. It is an inheritance of the sons. Let me correct your doctrine a bit. <laughs> Those of you who have been praying for double, triple anointings. You know what a double portion means? A double portion of the anointing. A double portion of the anointing is not two times of the anointing. And no one can give. No one can give beyond what they have. As you have received, so do you give. So when Joshua was asking for a double portion, he was not asking for two times of your anointing. There is no way Elijah could have given times two of what he had. What a double portion of anointing means, you read it in the book of Deuteronomy. God had commanded them in the law that if you have six children, you see, you will have to divide your inheritance into six portions. After six portions, you have to add another portion. Then the firstborn, because many of us, because some of you think you need more anointing than what another has. So he says, the firstborn will have two portions. So the two portions of the whole thing. So in Agawiwa, kutoka kwa the whole thing. Then, igawanywe mara mingi. Firstborn, apata two portions. Na wengine watu apata one, one, one portion. So when he says, or he asks for two portions, he is, in other words, asking the place of the firstborn. And remember, it was the firstborn who received the blessings of the father. That is what happened with Jacob, Israel. Joseph took the place of the firstborn, and they were given two places of the tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. So, to... A double portion of the anointing is not two times of the anointing. It is the first place. It is to inherit that mantle. It is to inherit the blessing of the father as a firstborn. And those of you who love supporting it by saying that Elijah did exactly twice miracles as Elijah did. Number one, let me ask you a, a very plain and an honest question. Number two, do we measure someone's anointing by the miracles they do? <laughs> what about those in our times ambao wame fanya miujiza mingi kushinda yesu? Are they more anointed from than Jesus? Actually, Jesus says that the things I do, you shall do also and greater things. Are we more anointed than Jesus? You never measure the level of anointing with the numbers of miracles you do. Hello. Number two, if that is how you look at things, <laughs> how comes Elijah did not even die, the hosts of heaven and chariots of heaven came for him, and a man who was double anointed more than Elijah died of a sickness and a disease. His bones were able to raise a man, but they were not able to heal him. Now, between how these two people went to heaven, who, who according to your evaluation of anointing, Ninani anakakuwa more anointed? Mimi nataka tuombe. Bwana asifiwe. What you need is not a triple, simunisaidie, baada ya triple inaendaka nini, zikiwa nene ngapi? Eh, zikiwa tano? That's not what you need. When this man got that place of the firstborn, what does the Bible say? When he came on the other side, the sons of the prophet said, when they saw him, for sure the spirit of Elijah rest upon him. It was the spirit of Elijah that rested upon Elijah. 
Some of you some special anointings mnataka atujui zitatoka wapi. Bwana asifiwe. But it is God who gives gifts. It's not your pastor. Sasa msianze kuangalia pastor. The Bible says it is the Holy Spirit who distributes as he wills. But one of the way to be imparted is to lay hands on men and you receive impartation. That is why you ought to be so careful. Ni nani ana wawekelea mikono because you receive when people lay their hands on you. You know Paul is telling Timothy in 2 uh, Timothy 1 verse 6 that stir up stir up the gift. I am preparing you because I want us to pray. Stir up the gifts. Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hand. So how did Timothy receive this gift? By the laying of Paul's hands. When your father lays hands on you, when a man or your man of God lays hands on you, you receive gifts. You receive grace. You receive anointing. You can receive the spirit of wisdom as Joshua received it when Moses laid his hands on them. That's why even I am counseling many of even your biological parents. Nimeenda juzi na my wife kwa nyumbani and kulikuwa na mkutano kidogo and they sit watuombe. You see? And I was I told my wife we 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 have to kneel down. There is no way your parents can pray for us when we are standing no there is no way we we knelt many of you don't know what these things are that is why your biological father is so gifted in an area but you are not even like his son nothing shows that you are you are you are his son or his his daughter paul says i laid my hands on you and you received a gift stir it up then he says to timothy also In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 this is another scenario where the elders of the church laid hands on Timothy and he also received a gift so he said do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of eldership so the elders laid hands on Timothy and he received a gift that is how you receive brothers and sisters that you receive from God but through his servants through his vessels Paul is telling the church in Romans chapter 1 verse 11 that I long to come to you that I may impart some spiritual gifts that you may be established. I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. And we saw what what is this gift that specifically establishes is understanding. So he is telling them I can write letters to you There is that what you can receive through letters but I also long to come and impart some spiritual gifts to you. When men of God preach to you there is that what they can impart but when they lay their hands on you there is also the spiritual gifts that they can impart and today the Lord is going to impact us with spiritual gifts. When you read in the book of Corinthians we are not going to read that one in 1 Corinthians from chapter 12 the bible is saying that it is god who gives all these gifts it is the same spirit but he gives to different men as he wills to different men as he wills to different men and it mentions actually some of the gifts it says that to some he gives the word of wisdom today some of you are going to receive the word of wisdom to some he gives the word of knowledge to some the bible says he gives faith the gift of faith to some he gives the gift of healing to some he gives i am mentioning them that you may choose what you want today because there is another area of where also the lord tells us to choose the best gift so there is an area you can also there is the liberty also of choosing to another he says he gives the gift of working of miracles to another he says that he gives the gift of prophecy to another the gifts of discernment to another the gift of speaking in tongues and to another the last one the ninth one is the gift of interpretation of tongues the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 that when jesus ascended to some he gave gift to men to some he gave apostles to some he gave to be prophets to some he gave to be evangelist 
to some he gave to be pastors to some he gave to be teachers every believer should have an area in those fivefold ministry you might not be a prophet but you might be an apostle even if you're an apostle you might not stand on the pulpit you can be an apostle in the marketplace but Oh, every one of us need to have a grace that you carry. A grace. And it is him who gives these gifts. He distributes them. He distributes them willingly. And today he is distributing because he is in this place. He is distributing. He is distributing gifts. The Holy Spirit is imparting us, impartation. From today, some of you, there are things you will do by the grace of God. It is because he wants this house to be built. And the house cannot be built without you being built. You are the house of the Lord. You are the temple of the Lord. He wants you to build your marriage where. He wants you to build your finances where. He wants this, ma this minister to be built. And for anyone to build, they must be anointed. For no, no, no one works for God without anointing. Nothing is acceptable to God without being sanctified of the Holy Spirit. He is distributing gifts. And that mountain that has been standing before us, even as a ministry, the Lord is saying, by the grace he is releasing today, this burden will no longer be carried by one man. But the same spirit he has given to his servant, oh, the same spirit he shall give to you. The same way he has given it to his servant, to see visions, to see where we are headed. Because sometimes we are compelled to do things according to what we have seen. I know the Lord is doing this, even because of the many visions he has shown me. Now the same grace rests upon you. You shall see those in the technical department, they shall begin to see them connecting a big sound in a, in a, in a stadium and they will begin to act to other. Those in the media department, the same way the Lord has accorded to me, I see screens, big screens everywhere. The people in the media shall begin to see the same thing. They have the grace also to see because we must build according to the patterns of God. Those who are intercessors in this ministry, the Lord is opening your spiritual eyes to see. You must see the direction of where the Lord is taking this ministry those who are in the children ministry they must see what the Lord has planned for this ministry and they must begin to act accordingly the same spirit that he has given for this vision because whenever he gives an assignment he gives grace and the same grace he has given he has given it to men those men who support this ministry even financially the Lord is going to show you that there is somewhere he has taken us so fast that he may give you understand to make money understanding to make money wisdom to make wealth oh, so that you may know that this kingdom must advance so highly and so quickly oh no longer will men in this church oh, even serve the Lord with negligence no longer men in this service will serve the Lord without knowledge no wherever you are you shall seek knowledge and understanding men will be praying you will not serve in this ministry without praying but you'll be telling the Lord today as I lead in intercession today I lead, as I lead in praise and worship as I go to do that ushering father let your wisdom be upon me let me not give you a sacrifice that has not costed me father let me not give you a sacrifice father that has not costed me men will be devoted from today how to find your mungu mikazi komikono milegevu tena will not be among the burden but will be among the burden carriers will not be among so at and Sanbarat will be among Nehemiah for we are sent to build we are builders even in the nation of Kenya we are builders even in our generation men are going to arise men of understanding rise up on your feet in the name of the Lord Jesus James chapter 1 verse 5 rise up on your feet wherever you are I want you to pray even if I say that it is the spirit that is upon the, the servant of the Lord that is taken and given to men. But God did not tell Moses that go and remove the spirit that you have and put the same spirit upon them. But Mo God says, I, I. So it is God who anoints. It is the spirit who anoints. Even if that is the spirit, the same spirit he has given to another servant. But he says, I am the one. I will take some of the anointing upon him and put it upon you. It is not your pastor who is the giver of this anointing. I may anoint you, I may even choose you, and sometimes I may favor you more than others. But one thing I want to assure you is that it is God who favors. It is God who anoints. Men of God may anoint you, but it is God who chooses. He's the one who distributes gifts as he wills, the Holy Spirit. I want you to make a prayer, a short prayer, using this verse. The Bible says that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. 
The Bible says that, you know, if because it is a wisdom, you can pray for it. You can ask it. Solomon just asked it and he got it. Today I want you to ask it from your father. Because he's saying that if anyone lacks wisdom in any area, let him ask for this wisdom from me. And then the Bible says that God gives liberally without reproach. He does not give grudgingly. Happy mangi. Solomon alimpatia so much. Today he can he can he can fill you until you are full of the spirit of wisdom. You are going to tell the Lord, Father, give me wisdom. I do not want you to only ask wisdom in the area of the ministry, but tell him, especially in the areas you know you lack wisdom. If your business is not doing well, it is because you lack you lack wisdom in business. If your family is not doing well, you lack wisdom in your family. If there is any area in your life that is not working well, tell him, Father, in in this area i pray that you give me wisdom and he gives liberally without reproach and it will be given to him it will be given to you verse 6 verse 6 verse 6 verse 6 it will be given to you keep on praying pray pray ask him for wisdom the bible says let him ask in faith with that, with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind verse 7 so let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the law. The next verse, the Bible says, He is a double-minded person and stable in all his ways. There is only one condition to receive him. The condition is not your papers. The condition, the qualification is not your academics. The, the qualifications is not the money that you have not. These things you cannot buy. I told you, wisdom is one of the things that cannot be bought. So the qualification, the Bible says, is that you may only ask by faith. Do not doubt someone. Someone just believe that today I am going to receive an impartation. There is a gift I am going to receive. There is a spirit that I am going to receive. And the Bible says when you pray, do not doubt her. Oh, anyone who doubts her, do not think that we receive her. Anything from the Lord. Oh, those who are double-minded, they never receive her. Those who are saying I may receive, I may not receive her. The Bible says it is sure that you will not believe her. That will not receive her. But anyone who believes her, that I must receive I pray, Father, in this area, give me wisdom in spiritual, in my spiritual growth. Give me wisdom in my ministry. Give me wisdom in my service to you. Give me wisdom in my family. Give me wisdom in my finances. Give me wisdom. Someone pray like Solomon prayed. The Bible says, and it will be given to him. As you pray, the Lord is giving it to you. 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 The Lord is giving it to you.